Hello friends, welcome to Instagram, welcome to YouTube. We're all here on YouTube. I am just waiting for my compatriots, my compadres to join me on the Instagram and then I'm going to get them up on this stage because if you're on YouTube you will see all three of our delightful faces looking at you. Well actually we're currently looking at our phones trying to figure out how to um, finger the right buttons. I'm not going to start, I'm not going to start yet. I'm going to wait. There we go. I've just, I've just pressed accept. <laughs> just pressed accept. They should be here with me. Come on, come on. <laughs> I just got the end of that. Yeah, yeah. I think I just I got the where. beginning. Early. And so it begins. <laughs> um, welcome, friends. Hello. Hello. Um, it's history after dark. As I'm, as I'm, as I'm up the top, I'll do the title of the room and then I'll do the disclaimer. <sighs> it's another deceased git. We are now on deceased kit number numero five. Um, after this episode, properly tomorrow, maybe over the weekend, there will be a poll mm. on both platforms, Hinsta and the YouTube, as to whether or not you think this person that we're talking about today was culpable. And then uh, four weeks from now, we will be doing a, a general rundown of the previous four gits and we will be the culpability scores will be an add additional 10 potentially that could be added to the final score to make up a hundred today's deceased git could be contentious could be a scandal <laughs> we are talking about the first um and how big of a git she was she's one of lots of people's heroes let's see where we go with it before we do so should i just before it gets spicy, should yeah. jump in. Mm -hmm. Friends, it's Wednesday night. It's hump day. And uh, this is History After Dark. We are quarter past eight of an evening. That's why we call it History After Dark, because here it is dark. We made it in winter, and then uh, it got summer, and it wasn't dark anymore. But now it's winter again, so it's back dark. But we always call it that because we like to impart historical knowledge we like to look up at the stars of history, but also be laying in the gutter of filth that is our natural state. We may be not Philippers, we are corrupting her though, but certainly <laughs> Catherine and I are reprehensible gutter snipes. Um, and so with that being said, there may be some innuendo, there may be some um, smut, uh, so, and so, almost certainly some forced letter expletives. So if you happen to be in an open plan office with a judgmental boss, put a headphone in. If you happen to be in a car or a kitchen with a small child who is likely to be a dobber, we call him Timmy. Timmy's a problem. Mm -hmm. Timmy is the kind of obnoxious child that hears something, doesn't say anything to you, but buttons that, boop, and then goes into school tomorrow and tells prim, proper little miss, the teacher, who wouldn't say boo to a goose, father's a, a reverend, um, you know the type, uh, <laughs> basically <laughs> Miss Honey on acid. Uh <laughs> tells her whatever vile, obnoxious stuff we've said, and then you get a phone call because she's crying in the supply closet. If, that, if, that, if you don't want that to be your Thursday, just saying, put a headphone in, right? Um, <laughs> or you can watch us on the playback, either on the YouTubes or the Instas. I say you can watch us on the playback. That is unless we say something that is literally borderline criminal. <laughs> 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 that is I've... potentially legally actionable in some way, shape or form. <laughs> I'm too pretty to do jail. Um, so if that happens, and it has happened once before, we will yeet this footage into the sun, but it's only happened once before, which either means we've got better or we're due. One or the other, <laughs> we shall see. So I think that's it. Oh, also, if you don't know what it means and we're laughing, don't, don't Google you, it. Don't Google it. Don't Google it. I believe that's a disclaimer. Let's talk Git. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk git. The problem we've got though is if we have to eat it, we have to do this one again, aren't we? Because otherwise we'll be Correct. missing a git. Correct. Yeah, we'll have to be, no. have to be <laughs> a bit <laughs> careful. Maybe. Okay, this is yeah. just such a huge topic. So when we were putting this list together initially, I think we were a bit like, yeah, we know loads about that one. So it will be fine. It'll be easy that week. And I don't know about you ladies, but I've kind of found the opposite. I've just got so much. And so I've got to try and sort of condense it 
not be too patchy with it. So I've got I've got about six pages worth of stuff. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, so I've got, got to here for an yeah, hour. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I'm trying. so I'm so sorry if anybody feels that I've sort of I've got this early part of Elizabeth's life. I just see that a little bit and I, I've kind of not gone into it in much depth or I've missed bits out but it's kind of a start of a 10 isn't it really it's just trying to like warm you up a bit so and I'm sure a lot of you know a lot about Elizabeth I've seen David Lee come in here so I wondered if he'd come in today so um, yes Elizabeth was born on the 7th of September 1533 at Palace of Greenwich in London and we all know she had very famous parents Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn and some really good grandparents in there as well so she had Henry VII and Elizabeth of York and then of course she had uh, Thomas Boleyn was her father and he married Elizabeth Howard who was the um, sister of Thomas Howard, third Duke of Norfolk, also known as Simon, and he he was he was a bit of a git as well, wasn't he? Do we have him down? We should probably have him down. Him down. Yeah, we, I think we should. He may he may deserve. Which Q? Why is he also known as Simon? Okay, so when I was supposedly writing the book on the Howards, okay. when you get to the three Dukes, uh, the three Howard Dukes of Norfolk, because they were Mowbrays the first time round, you've got right. John Howard, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. So the, the, actually, the fourth one was actually Henry, but he got executed. So right. um, so it was um, John, Thomas, Simon and Adrian, just so that you John could, Thomas. Like... Yeah, a bit unfortunate, but that's not my fault. That was their <laughs> fault. <laughs> that was their fault. You're right. That was their fault. I can't be held responsible for that. So, yeah, so the third duke was Simon, the fourth duke was Adrian. So there's a name you... Made yes, up. just to make it just okay, to cool. make it just easier cool. while I was writing and when I was having discussions with people. So the third Fabulous. Of is Simon. I'm on track now. Continue. Yes. Sorry, I, I do apologize. I do apologize. So yeah, so quite a good set of grandparents there. Um now obviously Anne and Henry were hoping for a boy. Elizabeth was not a boy. Anne must have been quite scared. But they were like, no, this is a sign that we're very fertile. There will be more babies and we will have a son. There was a hooray. And she was christened and she kind of like her elder sister, Mary, daughter of Catherine of Aragon, was really sort of shoved out of the way. And this was very possibly there was quite a big age gap. The start of it could be argued that there were periods where Mary and Elizabeth got close, but probably more likely that the opposite was true. There wasn't really much binding them together. And you can see, obviously, it, it sort of spills over in the end. And they, oh, I'll come back to that because I think Elizabeth, Mary made a bit of a dick move on Elizabeth, but that's another story. Um, so as we know as well, on May the 19th, 1536, Elizabeth's mother, Anne Boleyn, was executed slash murdered by her father. And um, that, of course, little, little, little tiny Elizabeth wouldn't have known anything about that. But I think we've all discussed how it makes us very sad to feel this little tiny girl never knew her mother. And to add insult to injury, then everything was taken, not everything was taken away. But, you know, she was almost neglected by her father in the sense that obviously compared to a lot of children, she had an awful lot. But he stopped caring. He stopped supplying with her um, household with adequate money. He stopped taking an interest in Elizabeth. And um, her governess had to write to Thomas Cromwell and say, you know, she has not got um, enough clothes. She's not got all these various things that she needed. So this little girl had been the heir to the throne. You know, she was the most royal princess. She was all these things. And it was just taken away in an instant, which created an issue because you've got this little girl who's actually of higher status than anybody else in her household. And yet she's being deprived of things that, somebody of her rank and status should have but it really comes across that Henry just doesn't care he's just not bothered I often wonder and I don't know what people in the comments think and I don't know what you think ladies just that just you know he restores Mary to favour shortly after this because she she agrees to step up and say yes my parents marriage was invalid I'm illegitimate you know, and, and kind of goes with what Henry wants. She, she agrees to follow all the different sort of things that he set out to make them accept that Anne was queen and accept oh, all these, you know, everything. And she just sort of stood against that. And she finally backed down because she was in danger of her life a little bit. And so Mary kind of gets restored to favour a little bit. And Elizabeth gets sort of pushed out even more. And Henry just it really comes across that he just doesn't care. Mary has become his favourite again and Elizabeth is just pushed to one side. So all these things I think Elizabeth wouldn't have been aware of at the time. But these are things that she'd have found out 
as time had gone by, I think all this information, it kind of comes together for me a little bit as well. So Anne Boleyn is executed. Henry, in his usual tasteful and appropriate style, within two weeks, has married Jane Seymour. So this is the first of Elizabeth's stepmothers. And some people credit um, her with having to help me sort of like repair the relationships a little bit between Henry and his daughters. I don't know what you think about that. I think it's given less credence now, perhaps, than it used to. So we've got little Elizabeth here. Now, it doesn't actually take very long, does it? You know, they, they've got this marriage. Henry's married again. He's got this. He's going to get this son. He's determined to get what he wants now. Um, and they have the son. Him and Jane Seymour have the son. They have little delightful Edward, who may have turned out to be a tiny psychopath. But, you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Yes, he, no, he is. is. No, he definitely, definitely is. is. Um, for sure. For sure. So now Henry starts to think, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start to bring my daughters back to court because now, of course, he's got a son. He's got a son that he can put on the throne so he can say they're illegitimate. They don't really matter. They don't really matter. What are you looking at, Kat? I've just seen a comment on Instagram. Um, no NorCal recruiter. Hi from California. Hello. Doing my civic duty at jury duty. I hope to Christ <laughs> <laughs> that you have a headphone in if you are in front of people or a judge. <laughs> please, please, oh God, God, let that be what's happening. It's anything or, like when I was doing jury duty. It was just a lot of sitting around doing bugger all and then being told you yeah. can go for the day. That's very true, actually. It was a complete uh, waste of time on your part, wasn't it? Was it was really? a complete waste yeah. of time. But maybe, still, well, I hope that's what's happening. Still, I hope you're not in the courtroom. If you're in the courtroom, playback. Pay attention. It means <laughs> playback. This could be someone's life, to be fair. I mean, yeah. In the waiting room, there you oh, go. In the waiting room, in the waiting room. Okay, okay thank we'll you. you I, I got a little bit panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get in contempt of court? Uh, right, sorry, oh apologies. Right, so anyway, so even though... That'd be our first arrest, though. I think that'd be quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> that we know of. That we know of. That we know of. Um... <laughs> I've, 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 no children. <laughs> I've also no seen um, intrepid Freddy Cat. Edward reminds me of Timmy. Facts, facts, and truth. <laughs> facts. Edward is Timmy. Yeah. If Edward also had a kind of slight murderous um, bird plucking, he, he yeah, no, uh, yeah, plucking, bird look plucking. into my eyes while I pluck this bird and what he's a tell you what shit, I could have done to you. Mm. Creepy oh. little shit. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, we're getting so, sidetracked. <laughs> so they, they come back to the palaces and things. And Mary is still, though, kind of given precedence. Now, in some ways, she should be because she's the older daughter. But it's it's made very, very clear which one is, is the favourite still. Um, now, Elizabeth, though, is supposed to be more like her father in her looks and her temperament and her temper and everything like that than Mary is. Mary is a bit more serious. I think we often view her as a bit more sort of serious and, and sensible and maybe not strong willed in some ways. Very certainly so. But there was obviously differences in their personalities. And again, they had different upbringings in, in many ways, different personal experiences. Elizabeth, um, Mary at least did have sort of a good relationship with her mother and, and kind of that backup. But Elizabeth didn't really have anybody. A lot of the people in her in her um, houses and her estates and things like that originally were put there by her mother when she was a very small child. And some of them went through with her and they really became her friends and her confidants and almost her family, really. Because I don't think she ever, especially after Mary put her in prison, had a particularly good relationship with her but they they didn't i think it's easy isn't it for siblings although they were pitted against one another by henry one was the favorite then the other one it's hard sometimes to as, as when you have a clash with that sibling i think so this is not talking about sort of gittishness in terms of family relationships and things to be fair to mary and elizabeth they had been pitted against one another and it's hard to let that go i think sometimes to look at it objectively and not be affected that sexual relationship to kind of say no we had this narcissistic toss narcissistic narcissistic tosser as a dad he did this to us and actually we should be on the same page here but there were too many other factors going on weren't there however she was closer in age to edward than she was to mary 
and they did have the same tutorage for a while and so they grew up together a bit more and they shared the same sort of more um, protestant kind of upbringing and background in their faith and as we know edward grew up with a fiery passion for that rather like mary with her fiery passion for catholicism and we'll touch on how elizabeth tried to take a bit more of a middle ground with that really but they were raised much more by protestant reformers um, so we said, I mentioned Jane Seymour, so she was the first of Elizabeth's stepmothers, but obviously she wasn't around for very long. She passed away after she had Edward. And then Henry married, married, however you want to term it, however he would term it, Anne of Cleves. And that marriage didn't last very long, but apparently she stayed on good terms with Anne of Cleves and they continued to write to each other. So that was kind of quite nice. I don't really know much about what their relationship was like whilst she was um, her stepmother, but I, I believe it was fine. There was no acrimony. It was quite civil. Now, obviously, with her next stepmother, Catherine Howard, what Elizabeth sees is a repeat of what has happened to her mother. And they, and they were cousins, um, um, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard. And um, she, she just saw the same thing again. She saw how her father treated women and she could see this being replicated a lot in society because of how society was then and how women gave up their autonomy and their... Um, their, their inheritances and things like that because of the way things were. And so obviously she sees this poor young girl beheaded. And apparently at that point, she turned to Robert Dudley, who we will be coming back to, who was her friend and said, I, I'm never going to get married. I, I, I'm not doing it. She was eight. Now, either that's either very sad or very wise, depending on how you want to look at this situation. So let us know your opinion on that, really. Um, now, of course, his final wife is Catherine Parr. And this seems to start off brilliantly. So she is a very good stepmother. Her and Elizabeth become very close and they have a good relationship. Now, when Henry dies, we see the situation where Edwards becomes king. Mary goes off. She's got all these lands and estates. She gets more than Elizabeth. She goes off and she just prances around East Anglia for a bit in her massive estate up there. And there's no real place for Elizabeth. So Catherine Parr's married Thomas Seymour. Speaking of gits. What a shit. <laughs> is he on the list? What he should, again, shit. he should be on the list. If I can't remember if he is or not. So I think he might be. I don't know. Anyway, so she marries Thomas Seymour. There are all these questions about whether or not it was a love matter for her. Anyway, so, so she invites Catherine, um, sorry, she invites Elizabeth to live with them in London. Now, <laughs> now then, let's just take a moment to talk about this situation. Because Thomas Seymour, I think the whole uh, Catherine part, it was all a bit of a power play because he really would have liked to marry Elizabeth. And it was like, no, you're not having any of that. So he's married to Catherine. But even though he's married to Catherine, he's now got this pretty young Elizabeth under his roof. He's got a bit of control over her. So he starts to spend a little bit too much time going in and out of her chambers. She tries to get up earlier. He comes along earlier. He's in his nightgown. She's in her nightgown. And he's slapping her bottom and he's tickling her and all things like that. And then there was meant to be one incident where Catherine was out in the garden with him and they held Elizabeth down and cut up her dress. So we start to get the question, and I don't have much time to dwell on it here, but I'm sure we might come back to it about how much was Catherine part in on this? Was she jealous? Was she trying to protect Elizabeth? But she finds him in an embrace. She's quite heavily pregnant at this point. And she sends Elizabeth away. And they exchange a couple more letters, but they've been so close. She sends her away there at Suderley by this point, and they never see each other again. It's a very sad situation. They have this little girl, Catherine Park gives birth to this little girl called Mary, who just disappears. And then she dies um, post birth of complications. Thomas Seymour, not put off by the fact that his wife's only just mumped it. All right. And apparently Elizabeth was a bit like, well, he doesn't really need any comforting. Cat Ashley, her governess, suggested that she wrote to him and she was like, no. Decides that he's going to go in pursuit of Elizabeth again. And it's kind of known as the Seymour plot, isn't it? Where he was trying to do it underhand. If you couldn't get it the right way, he's going to try to go underhand about it. Anyway, there's the thing with the dog. That's another story. He gets arrested for treason. They decide to execute him. Sometimes you read. There's a thing with a dog. He shot the dog. There is there is a sadness with the dog. There is a sadness with the dog. Um, so yeah. Anyway, the dog dies. Edward's Poor upset. Everyone's upset. I love the bits you decide to just 
mention but well, skip you know, over. It's, it's, it's not important to Elizabeth, is it? It's not important to Elizabeth. Well, I mean, it is important to Elizabeth because she's dragged into well, it. Well, yes, because then what we see... I've, I've, I've lost the plot now where I am. No, shot the dog. Right. Shot the dog. Anyway. Elizabeth so gets arrested, gets, thrown in gets, the tower. Yeah. So because Mary's determined to find something that Elizabeth's done wrong. So Elizabeth protests her innocence, but Mary shoves her in the town. This is, I think, was a bit of a dick move on Mary's part because she puts Edward, Elizabeth Isn't this in. Edward the first Hang time? On. Isn't she arrested? She's, 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 she's not put in the tower for Edward. She's questioned by Edward. Yeah, she's questioned, she's questioned about it. Because yeah. the plot, they think the plot is that he's he's snuck into the bedchamber and the one there's one of two plots. Either he's trying to usurp his brother as Lord Protector and or... He's trying to kidnap Edward yeah. and or additionally um, replace Edward with Elizabeth as queen, who he's, he's marrying marry. yeah. Yeah. and him as king. It's so reason. we're not quite sure what, mm. what the plot is. He gets accused Either of way, killing the dog. He has a gun as well. <laughs> Near he might have been king. there. We're not sure. Yeah. But he's daddy bones. Yeah. Um, yes. He's gone. So um, Elizabeth is sort of like, and she, she puts her, doesn't she? This is where she puts Elizabeth in the rooms where her mother that's um, later. Been, was that later? Oh, I wasn't sure. I, I'm sorry. I got that right. wrong. But anyway, it's still a dick move on Mary's part anyway. So Elizabeth is there for a while. Mary can't really find anything on her, can she? So, you know, that's it. So eventually she kind of has to kind of get her out of there, but she's still being watched. And I believe she's at Hatfield at this point. And she's studying. She's very scholarly. She speaks a great number of languages. She's an incredibly intelligent young woman. And she's staying in touch with her brother. She's writing all the right sort of things to the king. And he starts to invite her to court more, which restores her reputation, which had got quite damaged with the Seymour affair, even though that probably wasn't her fault. But people all over Europe were talking, you know, about it. What has Elizabeth done? And, you know, all things like that. And it damages your reputation as a young woman to be found in those sorts of situations with, with a man. So the whole of Mary's reign really was a really dangerous time for Elizabeth. She often maybe wouldn't have known whether Mary was going to just keep accusing her of things, if she was going to be safe, if she was going to be imprisoned. And we do see um, it's, it's early 1544. We have the Wyatt Rebellion, uh, which was, again, it's, it's one of those Cornwall country things, but it was essentially a plot to try and put Elizabeth on the throne over Mary. It's a very, very simplified way of putting that. So, again, Elizabeth comes under suspicion. She's questioned and so on and so forth. I need to do this a bit quicker now. But she, was, she was put at house to rest under Woodstock. Um, she has only eyes for the delightful Robert Dudley. I'm kind of skipping here a little bit. And so even though she's at Woodstock and, Woodstock and she's under house arrest, she's still in contact with quite a lot of people in her household and things like that. And so we have Robert Dudley, Earl of, of, Earl of Leicester. Apparently very tasty. I don't know. He was married to a woman called Amy Robsart. So he was a married man. It was all very shocking. Once again, this relationship was the talk of Europe. Did they, didn't they? Have they had a fling? Some dude called Arthur turns up three decades later pretending to be her son. Philip of Spain, who had been married to Mary and this kind of, no, the feather Philip of Spain had been married to Mary. And this has kind of instigated the Wyatt Rebellion because nobody wanted a Catholic king. I've gone really arse about face with this now. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm getting very confused, Catherine. <laughs> Okay, so with the Wyatt Rebellion, Mary had married Philip of Spain, married Philip of Spain. He was a Catholic and nobody wanted that. And that was one of the reasons why we had um, the Wyatt Rebellion. And um, oh, I've got myself a bit flustered now. I'm really, really sorry. So, um, Elizabeth, well, are, there, this is are there any examples of Elizabeth being a git in her younger years? I, I don't. To her, but yeah, she... I'm, I'm trying to sort of scene set a bit because I feel she's had so much damage. And she, she's the one man that she probably ever really we can assess seems like that she wanted to be with she never got the chance to but she well, has we'll these, yeah <laughs> and, and then there's well, I know we're going to be talking about the succession crisis aren't we mm -hmm. I just there's so much I don't know what to leave out um but when Mary passes away she hasn't uh, you know, she she tried to get Elizabeth in. She had her in her confinement. Obviously, we know there was no baby. She sort of seemed to keep her close for a while. We're not entirely sure. Why was she keeping her eye on her? Did she want a better relationship with her? Um, but when she it becomes clear that Mary is childless and she's dying, she does name Elizabeth as her successor, which she doesn't want to do because she's tried, obviously, to bring the country back to Catholicism. Now, 
when she does die, Elizabeth really tries to take a bit of a middle ground with religion because she can see, obviously, all the conflicts that are still going on. And she does have sort of a Catholic-based coronation, but she does not prostrate herself on the floor. She moves out when she goes for the mass. And she sees a lot of, she keeps some Catholic elements and she takes away some Catholic elements because she tries to say, you know, there's one God, the rest is just frivolity. One God, one faith, the rest is just nitpicking. But that then, of course, pleases nobody. She kind of gets a bit stuck and there's issues with that later on. But I think we can see she tries to be sensible. She tries to take this centre ground because as well, people are very restless with the state of the country and how it's been run and the debasement of the coinage. So I think in terms of Gittishness, in more Elizabeth's early life, I'm finding it hard to find Gittishness because she was very much at the mercy of other people. And she really looked at the country. She looked at the debasement of the coinage. She looked at the state of the Navy and saw how important it was. And um, the failed harvests. And she did look at how people were suffering. She couldn't just tax because she had to run it through Parliament. But a lot of the money she found to try and um, restore the coinage, to try and build trade up with the overseas, with other countries and things as well, was paid for. So not by taxation, but by um, crown land money. And also some of it was her own personal money, which meant that she had to sacrifice the things a lot of other monarchs had, like a big fancy court. A lot of the events she had were much more scaled down. She didn't have more stuff. And at this point, we don't see the Elizabeth we see later, who had all the grand finery and the dresses. Cat, What were the dresses called that she wore that kind of went out and went um, farthingales? So yeah, lots. Of, so that there's like there there's Spanish and and French for the farthingale gowns. So um, it's mostly that's the petticoat form. I'm yeah. Thinking. So she's not even. She was apparently quite beautiful, but she's so far removed. I think from the Elizabeth that we we will talk about shortly. So she had these dresses. She obviously she had the white makeup. She had the jewels, just dripping with the jewels, and she had the headdresses, and she had the wigs, and she had like like the ruff the that was so huge. It was like the neck of a Dilophosaurus and all these things. So I'm finding it hard. I'm sorry, that was so much waffled information. But what I'm trying to say is I find it hard to find Gittishness at this stage. I think she was treated very badly by a lot of people. It's totally understandable from start to finish, I think, why she didn't have a good relationship with Mary. A bit closer to Edward, but of course, once he becomes king, they're separated, you know, they're in very different positions. You know, Catherine Parr, was she let down by Catherine? She was certainly abused, I think, is now the perception of her time with Thomas Seymour. Um, the people doing these rebellions in her name got her into trouble, which she really didn't have anything to do with them. She feared for her life. And when she came to Queenship, she did try and look at the country and try to make it a better place where it was still being tripped up by the reign of her father, which hadn't had time to recover from her brother and her sister. So I am doing not gitty up until this point. Pretty much well, not mm, gitty. Things are about I'm just aligning up to this point. I'm going to put it out mm. there that when I get to doing legacy, I will be <laughs> circling back to the early life because I oh, there is definitely in my mind some some git moments and it's potentially understandable but git moments mm. i have decided that my my plan for the uh legacy portion is to be as contrary as possible because i come from a position of elizabeth being my one of my favorites so i am going to try to ignore all the good and be as argumentative as possible so we'll have fun with that <laughs> <laughs> um but what well, what happens we've got to what fifteen, seventeen. what happens next well i'm going to pick up actually a little bit earlier on because i think we oh, need to it. talk about the fact that in 1562 because this will become relevant elizabeth mm. very very nearly dies she can, yes. she contracts smallpox and she is moments from death I did have and that in my dip, but I gave up at that point because I thought you were all sick of me talking. I was half an hour, darling. You were half an hour talking. Um, so. So, so, yeah, so in 1562, Elizabeth's contracted um, smallpox. So she, she is very close to death. Interestingly, uh, tries to persuade her um, her council that Robert Dudley will be her um, her sort of re the regent in uh, 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 head of the council if she dies, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So you've got to remember wow. at this point they've, they've not only has her council, of course, from the moment she's become queen, would like her to get married, uh, 
uh, so name a husband, name an heir in the meantime. But after 1562, this becomes, you know, Elizabeth, you have you actually nearly died and you still haven't named an heir. So the YouTube. So the pressure really, really builds. Um, so I think it's worth us, us knowing that. First element of Gittishness, actually, just as kind of a bit of an aside, I'm not going to do any chronology because it'll be too hard to do this in chronological order, but Mary Sidney, Robert Dudley's um, sister who, who, who married into the Sidney family, nursed Elizabeth, contracted smallpox herself, was mm -hmm. so affected mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she was disfigured and didn't come back to court. Not thanked by Elizabeth, as far as we are aware. She did go back and visit her, but she never sort of did anything to... You'd have thought someone who nursed you through that and suffered that badly and was your favourite, lover, whatever's sister, that you might do something um, more public. No, she didn't. So anyway, there you go. What do you think of that? That's 1562. So she's still, you know, she's still, what, 30? Just under 30? That is gittish. It's a little bit gittish. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> now um, Catherine already mentioned that her when when Elizabeth comes to the throne, when when she hears that that she's become queen, she 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 recites a psalm in Latin. She recites it from the New Testament, so she's kind of she's already treading this fine line. She's pleasing the Protestants and she's pleasing the Catholics. She's pleasing the Protestants because it's out of the New Testament. She's pleasing the Catholics because she's saying it in Latin, and her coronation is a similar kind of doing bits of both. And actually, Elizabeth works out that without the pageantry that comes with Catholic, uh, you know, with with, with Catholic um, uh, ceremony, etc. It's going to be a little bit boring. There's going to be no grandeur. There's going to be no processions, and she's criticised for that. But but so so she she kind of I think there's a number of reasons actually why she has this mix. One of them does seem to be that initially she would quite like to not be so polarised as her brother and her sister have been in mm. terms of religion. That, however, doesn't go to plan. Because by 1570, she has been excommunicated. That basically means that any Catholic in um, in England can't receive, but you know, as subjects of Elizabeth, are either going to be good Catholics and faithful to the Pope or good subjects and faithful to the Queen. They can't be both at this point. Um, and that if you are a good Catholic and you're loyal to the Pope, the Pope's basically saying you can, you can, it's your duty actually to go and get rid of this um, this illegitimate queen who you know Catholic Europe saw Elizabeth as illegitimate. They did not recognise the marriage between um, Henry and Anne. I mean, ironically, neither did Henry at the end. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know they they never had done, and they didn't see um, Elizabeth as as legitimate. So um, that meant. That Catholic uprising, Catholic plots, whether real, imagined, made up by Cecil, whatever, were coming to Elizabeth's conscious um, far more often. And so, this um, there's her, but there's her council as well. Her council were very pro Protestant, very anti Catholic. Um, and they brought in legislation which banned mass, banned um, priests to even set foot in England um, and if you were I mean 1585 they brought in um, a piece of legislation which meant which said that if you had been ordained before uh, sorry since 1559 <laughs> so it's brought in in 1585 and it goes back to 1559 if you'd been ordained you're automatically a traitor if you, as if you've been ordained as a Catholic priest. So it's blatantly retrospective. Um, and if you're found harboring a priest, so if you're a priest, it's the death sentence. If you're found harboring a priest, it's the death sentence. And about 130 priests and 60 lay people were executed for this. And you think Mary gets her, um, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Sobrequipped. You call it sobriquet uh, as Bloody Mary for sort of three hundred. You know, Elizabeth's very close up there just from this this act alone. Mm. 
mass is banned so you've got um um people having to hear mass in in private and so there are harboring priests and they are it it, it it's incredibly dangerous um we we've had phil downing on from harvington hall we all know harvington hall brilliant amazing um time capsule elizabethan manor house which which has a number of priest hides in it we we, we know that they that this catholic recent um family who lived there held mass there but and this is this is typical then of all of catholic um families throughout throughout the the country do they look after their mortal body or their immortal soul and it's incredibly hard um you know like i i find it difficult because it's um it's not i suppose something i'm not i'm not particularly religious but actually you know i, I can't i suppose i can say that they, they've they've got this real dilemma and it and it's it's literally messing with um their lives and their afterlives um so there's that there's the persecution of the catholics so she yes she tries to do this i don't want to make windows into men's hearts thing at the beginning but that just doesn't play out so there's that then we get her uh, i think cat you might want to cover succession um i don't know if you want to cover it a bit more but i was going to mention because it's the it is the actually anniversary today of mary queen of scots execution which we didn't realise when we chose this date, actually. That that sort of went over our heads. But, of course, <coughs> Elizabeth um, becomes a regicide, I suppose, at this point. Mm. She does sign the death warrant for her cousin, Mary Queen of Scots. Now, interestingly, um, um, Gareth and I are going to explore this on the tour that we're doing in September. Elizabeth prefers Mary's claim over that of the Grey Sisters mm-hmm. and um, our Bella Stuart, she really favours Mary's claim. By favouring Mary's claim, she makes her her own rival. Mm. So conversely, she's she's favoured and put a, pitted herself against the same person through her own action. Now, of course, Mary um, is uh, escapes to to England after she's deposed in um, up in Scotland from her throne, and. It, she's incarcerated incarcerated in England for 20 years. Elizabeth, obviously we know, eventually signs the death warrant, but she spends a long time just basically wishing she, and Mary was dead. <laughs> there is, yeah. you know, there's lots of evidence that that she she may not wanted to have, have wanted to kill her. And we know that, that that haunted her for the rest of Elizabeth's life, the fact that she had done this. But she equally didn't particularly want Mary alive, and um, and if you ever visit um, Tutbury Castle, where Leslie Smith will tell you all about this, and actually I've, I did an interview with her about the, the, the about her uh, with her about this, the conditions that Mary was kept in were horrendous. Yeah, it, it's 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 really not surprising that that she got very very um, ill, mm. um, and. Yes, the Mary letters have come out today, which we've all got to go and have a look at before we speak with yes. any kind of authority on. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, so there's Mary Queen of Scots. So, so whole story. But the way she treated Mary Queen of Scots and then, of course, she ends up actually um, executing her is um, is potentially gittish. Potentially um, gittish. It's supposed to supposedly... Um, you know, stop Catholic threats. Well, we got the Spanish Armada the next year, so that didn't <laughs> that didn't work, <laughs> did it? Um, and you know, it, it, it wasn't anyway. It was billed as something that it, it possibly wasn't. Um, yes, it was a victory, but how much was skill and how much was weather and luck? I don't know. Someone with with naval battle prowess might be able to tell us more than I can. Um, but yeah, so she. Um, I don't care. Are you going to cover the Grey Sisters, or should I do that here? Um, I can, or you can. Because so, you. you've got, you've actually got. Um, so I say she favoured um, Elizabeth favoured Mary Queen of Scots' claim over that of the Grey Sisters. Now the Grey Sisters were legitimate. They were named in, or their line was named in both Henry VIII's and Edward the Sixth's wills. Their their devices for the succession in Edward's case. Um, And um, yet Elizabeth treated them horrendously. She cut a long story short, (laughs) basically was not going to let 
either of them marry. They both ended up marrying in secret, but I'm not completely sure how else they would have done it because mm. Elizabeth was just not going to let them marry. She was, um, I think she's an incredibly jealous person, mm. actually, Elizabeth. Yeah. She didn't want to see other people happy. Um, she, um, she, 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 um, decides not to marry and, and Catherine's gone over some of the kind of emotional reasons why that might be but she didn't really want anyone else to manage it either you know she'd see I suppose seen um, examples of marriage as being destructive and unhappy and so therefore decided not to do it and so don't you go and marry and make it look all great because I've decided <laughs> I'm not going to and I don't want that. Of course, you've got the fact that if uh, so all I mean, all of Elizabeth's um, uh, that all the candidates for Elizabeth's um, as a successor were female. Which starts to get me thinking that there was a little bit of internalized misogyny. <laughs> I'm putting it out there with Elizabeth. You know, why? If she, she's certainly not someone who is. Um, bigging up female power, maybe in herself, but certainly not saying, right, yep, yeah, I've done it. So then my, my successor can be a woman as well. She's not doing that. She doesn't want them to marry. She doesn't want them to have heirs. Catherine Gray has a son um, after the marriage uh, of, to Edward Seymour, which they have in secret. She gets him declared illegitimate. Okay, there's no witnesses to the marriage. So maybe... The, so that there's no proof the marriage took place. So yes, the first son can be illegitimate. But then publicly, clearly the couple have an intention to marry. They then manage to get another son. That by the by laws of, of, of marriage at the time should have been a legitimate son. Elizabeth has him declared illegitimate as well. So it's really, she's, it's, and, and Catherine ends up basically dying of, of grief possibly you know we we look at it as something like anorexia she stops eating and drinking and dies in her 20s um and elizabeth treats her younger sister mary just as badly mm. Mm. um she gets married in secret and is immediately pretty much immediately separated from her husband who her poor husband ends up in the fleet because he's not of any particular rank um and that that breaks him he's eventually released but he dies um so I don't know she's a female icon without any kind of feminist tendencies that I can that I can see um and um my last point that I wanted to to make is that I think we can romanticize Elizabeth's um uh, Elizabeth's sort of sacrifice of her own happiness in terms of marriage mm to be married to her country but she saw it like that as well if you look at the rainbow portrait on her sleeve is a serpent with a heart in its mouth the serpent represents wisdom the heart sort of your emotions not literally your heart she's wearing that it's it works it's it's in in that in that um painting wisdom over her kind of earthly womanly womanly urges she manages to be you know control those so she sees that as well herself. So I think there's mm. quite a little bit of gittishness. It's, in, it's certainly in coming there. in, isn't it? Mm. But I'm going to let Kat pick up the story now. So I, yeah, I, I agree. I think that um, that she's not she's not a feminist. I, 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 I don't think. To be honest, I don't think at this time when you have a combination of a medical understanding in the four humans that positions women as being biologically inferior to men literally the inversion improperly cooked version of men and then you have a biblical model that positions women as an heir to eve there is just there's simply no way that um it's i just i don't think it's possible to be a feminist or a proto-feminist she is additionally I think she thinks she's okay because she was anointed and that is transformative. She is designed, she is destined to be there by God. But even she, she has that, that conversation. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king and of a king of England too. She is differentiating herself. She's not like other girls. Mm -hmm. She ain't like other girls. Um, I want to hop back to the White Rebellion. 
Um, I want to hop back to, to hop back to hop forward. I think first and foremost, it's very possible that that Elizabeth may have been aware, potentially complicit in encouraging the White Rebellion, in encouraging the idea of it. It's possible that Mary was right. She just couldn't get her for it. Mm. That time in the tower, Elizabeth allows in her reign for that to be knit into a fucking tapestry of lies. So you have um, John Fox's Book of Martyrs, also known as Acts, uh, properly titled Acts and Monuments. In Acts and Monuments, or the Book of Martyrs, there are some of the most graphic impressions of people being burnt at the stake. They have a representation of Cranmer being burnt at the stake. There is a particularly upsetting representation. This is These are all like engraved woodcuts. There's a particularly upsetting one with a woman who is pregnant who is being burnt mm. at the stake. Her baby falls out and is put back on the fire. So the notion is there's a living baby that's put onto the fire. It's a deeply upsetting text. Uh, Elizabeth, as governor of the Church of England, orders that this, this book be chained up next to the Bible in English in every cathedral church in the land. It becomes an article of faith. The suffering of Protestant martyrs during the Inquisition and the reign of Mary. Elizabeth's story is in it. Her story of being in the tower uh, under threat of torment by her sister Mary, it talks about how she comes through traitor's gates or the gate which traitors are customarily used to landing at. There's another narrative that she was held in the bell tower potentially in the same cell that Sir or St Thomas More was held in before he was, in quotes, martyred. Elizabeth is allowing herself to be shaped as a living martyr of the Protestant faith, which in an almost entirely um, erroneous fashion. For a start, she almost certainly didn't come through the water gate or the traitor's gate. She would have come through the royal entrance, the same entrance that her mother came through at the time of her coronation and also at the time of her before her trial and ultimate execution. That is the Byward Poster, which is further along. But it doesn't have the cachet of being the, the gate that traitors customarily land at. She almost certainly wasn't held in the bell tower. She was almost certainly held instead in the rooms her mother was held in before her coronation, but also before her trial and execution. Now, is that traumatic? Yes. But are they in any way a martyr cell? Absolutely not. We have have this cult of Elizabeth, this Gloriana, that she is instrumental in shaping. We and it, and it, and it has altered the way we view history because of it. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. nurtures pirates and calls them privateers. Mm -hmm. In doing so, she essentially for for filthy lucre goads mm -hmm. the Spanish. Like long before the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, she is pulling, she's tugging and singeing at the, at the King of Spain's beard. She is goading. She's allowing her men to goad. Um, I've seen some comments, uh, Doug, you were talking about, when, when on the return from um, the troops that fought valiantly in the Armada, Elizabeth leaves them in port. She, re she refuses to allow them to come in. She's busy celebrating. And so these men are running out of rations. Food, water. They're dying. They're dying. Her soldiers are dying because she is failing to do what she should do, which is bring them home as heroes, which is what she's calling them. But she would rather be the hero herself. In her, I understand that in the, and I, I should have put out that Elizabeth is my favourite. I'm literally deliberately picking out the things that I think make her into someone who's fairly heinous, actually. Mm -hmm. I think she shows a, uh, a degree of callousness that I think is um, upsetting. I think she was callous about her relationship with Robert Dudley. Mm. And I think she was callous about the death of Amy Robsart. I um, think that her behaviour with her ladies, including her own family members, was unpleasant. Her refusal to even countenance them getting married. And I think in the case of um, the Grey Girls, 
in the case of Catherine Gray, it's not a smart choice to marry a Seymour. Mm -hmm. It's not a smart choice. What I will say is that by the time the invest, and now I'm going to make a, I'm going to hint at an allegation, but Elizabeth ain't alive. She can't sue me and she can't execute me. <laughs> Here's my allegation. <laughs> there were witnesses to that marriage. Mm. There was a priest who, for some reason, could not be found when the investigation happened. And the other witness was Seymour's sister, who conveniently died mm. just before the investigation started. Convenient, uh -oh, right? No witnesses. No witnesses. No witnesses. Whoopsie doopsie. That's interesting, I think. I, when I, I look back on the kind of the way in which this notion of Gloriana is shaped. And and let's be clear there, in the recoinage, she does something really quite special. However, she ain't the one that starts it. Mary begins the recoinage, but she dies. I think that she could potentially have given her sister comfort. She could have given her sister comfort in the time when she has that embarrassing um, and it is it shouldn't have been, but it was embarrassing. The phantom or failed pregnancy. People are mocking her. Mm. And it, it may actually have been not a phantom pregnancy. It may have been a cancer that killed mm. her. Elizabeth could have at that point sat at her sister's side, stalwart subject and family member. But... Elizabeth is very keen to return to Hatfield and to a kind of self-imposed exile, principally because she wants to distance herself, and I, in some ways understandably, from the burnings that Mary is doing. She doesn't do anything to potentially offer succour or assistance to the people being fucking burnt. What could she do? What could she do, of course? But what she's very keen to do is to separate herself from that legacy. When it comes to dealing with Roman Catholics, particularly after 1570, when it comes to dealing with Jesuit priests, um, torture is used, mm. which is illegal, mm. has always been illegal. Torture is used. And I think making them into traitors rather than heretics is a concerted choice because a heretic has the chance to recant and walk away. That's how heresy mm. works. Traitors do not. Yeah. Also, it's much easier to make a heretic into a martyr than it is to make a traitor. And I think Elizabeth is canny and she knows that. She is a prevaricator. She is a equivocator. The fanning around over the marriage, I understand why she may wish to avoid marriage. I've made a video on why I think she probably did the right thing for herself and arguably for her reign. But it's easy to say that when we're reading history backwards, because in the end, a king of Scots comes down, takes the throne, and there isn't a civil war or an invasion. But there so easily could mm -hmm. have been. Leaving your nation without an heir of your body or a named one, I don't believe for one single solitary fucking second, she named... Um, James on her deathbed it's very convenient that Robert Cecil had been mm. having letters exchanged with him um, and suddenly we're supposed to believe that maybe Elizabeth said it another version is that she made a symbol of a crown above her head, bullshit I don't believe she named anybody ever so she was quite happy to go to her grave leaving her country the country that she's supposed to love in a position of extraordinary turmoil Another thing, in addition to potentially bringing threats to the nation, I think it's worth pointing out that arguably two things need pave the way for something that happens later. The execution of her mother is one, and the execution of Mary Queen of Scots is the other. What happens there is two anointed bodies are executed as traitors. And so when, in the reign of James's son, there is another anointed body that is being accused of, of, of being a traitor, they have the blueprint. Mm. 
without Henry executing Anne and Elizabeth executing Mary Queen of Scots, I do wonder if we would have seen Charles I be executed. What we do have, of course, is a legacy of merry England, for better or for worse. We have uh, a world in which the plays of Shakespeare happen, where the globe is circumnavigated. All of these things make us feel good about England. What the overall um, morality of those things are um, is another is another question to I think put to ourselves uh, and to posterity. I think that it's very hard to evaluate Elizabeth with a cold, jaundiced eye because we are so gauzed, so veiled by the cult that she created. And so it's almost impossible to shape and discuss her legacy because she's telling us still what to say and what to think. Um, I think I might leave it there. Mm -hmm. I think... I've, I've, and I just want to point out that I do like Elizabeth. I was, I was trying to drag uh, out the guilt. Um, <laughs> Janice points out that Elizabeth um, corresponded with James. She did. She, she did. did correspond with James. She was like, "Sorry, I killed your mum," and he was like, "It's okay. Can I be your ex?" Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll let you ask. If they were about it, yeah. If I'm your ex, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and interesting, James ended up didn't he, uh, didn't he um, responsible for both of their tombs? So and apparently he he. According to Deb and Tudor Times, spent double his, <laughs> on his mother's as he did on Elizabeth's. Oh, it's a bigger boy. It's a bigger it boy. Is. It's a bigger boy. No, I, I, I mean, I would these things cost in those time, but yeah, it's um. But also, he's got her exuma to bring her down. He did, he did indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So interesting. I, I, I mean, she is one of my favorites, and actually, she's always been one of my favorites because she is so everything she, there's everything in there um yeah but I, she's so I, extra she i mean she's everything so she's everything i mean you know she 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 doubted herself and she'd be quite i think she comes across if you just look at her record as sort of being very decisive in it um but i don't think she wasn't she she prevaricated no. she would cry she would get frustrated um she whacked people over the head with a slipper you know all these things that I can relate to. I, um, I, can, I can relate to. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is, and the thing is, they make that prevarication. They make that kind of those those fits of emotion, which I think in so many other women would be like, well, just goes to show, can't trust a lady. I mean, Mary burns a bunch of people, and they're like, oh, typical woman gets angry, does a burning. I'm like, I'm sorry, what women do you know? Um, Elizabeth <laughs> Run away bed. now. Elizabeth <laughs> has a stalk in her bedchamber. Um, cries a lot, flounces, like does the thing that essentially women tend to be accused of doing. Um, and that is absolutely Machiavellian genius. Well, she, was very, she was a political she And was maybe a political it was. Player. Maybe, yeah. maybe the illnesses, the sulks were completely politically motivated. And I think almost certainly her flying into the rage after the execution warrant goes she signs it goes don't send this off without me telling you i'm gonna leave it here don't you <laughs> don't you send it and she puts it in front of some like podunk cannot make that call who takes it to william says who's like no we're, we're fucking sending it call the council we're fucking sending it and the council's like yeah mate we're fucking sending it and elizabeth's like how dare you how very <laughs> dare you I signed it, but I didn't for one moment think it would be fucking sent. Yeah. I only signed it. I mean, yeah, that's political. But the other, the weeping, the crying, the um, playing with potentially getting married, potentially not, all of that stuff, is that political genius or is that somebody who is freaking out? <laughs> I just I think just Actually. like generally she's like she she seems to have an awareness. Sorry, I have one of the dogs just come in. Um, she has an awareness of kind of her position. If you go right back to when she's questioned about the White Rebellion, you know, is somebody coaching her there, or is she that wily already from a life of seeing people turn the on shit each she's other? Seen. Yeah, yeah, you know, people who were once literally married. Um, uh, yeah, so that close turn on each other it's 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 she's she's just fascinating she is fascinating but i think it's important 
you know, why we wanted to cover her was because it's it, let's not just do the glossy propaganda image that Elizabeth would would only want because there was there's a whole heap of other stuff. She was a woman of her time, basically. She was a monarch of her time, I think. Yes. Um, well, Sam's put yeah. that she was, where's it gone? She's a great monarch from Trudy Royalty Experience, a great monarch, but an awful woman. Well, yeah. Does that seem like a fair just, summary? I mean, I think I it think does. that any any monarch of the medieval, late medieval, early modern period who manages to die in their bed of ill health rather than murder, poison or war is doing a bang up job. <laughs> If you if you die in your bed, you've done, you've done a bang or up on job. the floor. Oh, she was, uh, they're the just about, they just they just about got into bed, I think, didn't they? And of course, one of the best things is she gives us some phenomenal quotes. Oh, amazing must, orator! Must little man, little man, must is not a word to be used to princes. Oh, bitch! <laughs> yes, please. I use that one in my daily life. Actually. Little man, little man. I do it all the time. I just Adopted I that. get out of the car in a road. No situation to go, little man, little man. Mir miracle, I've not been stabbed yet, frankly. <laughs> that's how I'm going. There's one of two ways I'm going to die, and one of them is potentially road rage. Road rage and <laughs> road rage and other things, but yeah, which I won't go into because it's depressing. But yeah, just uh, so are we doing? Are we doing the poll in between now and next week, or or does everyone want to listen to you do the jingle when we do the roundup? Because I was thinking this when you went when you did it earlier. I, I thought we put the poll. Earlier. I thought we just put the poll up online, so we'd put it in our well, we can do, on, on that... YouTube, and people just just, could just and over the week when it comes to the next episode, we'll have the answer and we'll make a little note. So you have a week to vote. I think everyone will think? miss your jingle, but okay. <laughs> I mean, we could you know what we can we do the jingle do right now. Anyway. <laughs> We're gonna put we do it to... up a poll online. It's gonna be on the Facebook. No, it's gonna be on the YouTube, <laughs> and it's gonna be on the Insta, not the Facebook. It will be a yes or no, a yes or no. And if you put a yes, it scores ten points. <laughs> are they culpable or are they not? Was it a mistake or did they mean it? Was the gittish meant to be the way? If it's yes, they get ten extra points. If it's no, it is a hero. Oh, nice. <laughs> Actually, do you know, I know where we'll put the poll. We'll put the poll on the substack. We'll put it on the substack. Oh, okay. And that's where we'll put it. Um, because we all stack. want you to come to our substack anyway, um, <laughs> which I probably should tell you what that is. <laughs> and then we haven't got, and then we won't have a problem if if on one platform it's a yes and one platform no, it's a no. It'll be one, one poll place. is a good choice. So we are one poll is a good choice. History After Dark Hub. Because we're going to make it our hub, uh, and it sounds. Steve Dorothy, wish me luck for finding a tune for that. For that one, God bless. We haven't yeah. shared them all Thank from you. last week yet, have we? We haven't Thank shared you. them all yet. I've shared that. I don't. Oh, I don't know. Did we not? Oh, it sorry. Would be the, 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 the imagey one, like the ones with the just the images on. Oh, I've the shared. Oh, they were amazing. On. I shared. I shared the jingle. <laughs> me yeah, me too. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, Substack. Sorry, is History After Dark <laughs> Hub. Dot substack .com. So history after dark hub, all one amazingly long word, dot substack .com. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. All come over there, subscribe for free, and we'll put the poll in there. <laughs> Spence says you're a lyrical genius. Thanks, Amy. Love ya. Lyrical genius. You are. No and zero. It, I mean, it's just, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> it, was, you know what? It, was, it, was, it was like it was meant to be. What can I say? Um, oh, what are we doing? What's the, oh, it's, it's the Philip. wind up. Do, it, do, it, do the words. So, Philippa, what's happening next week? Next week, we're going on to our next skit. I'm trying to do two things F. at once at the moment, which is F. always interesting. F. 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 Yes, F. F. F for anyone who does sign language. Um, we're talking, and actually, Catherine and I will fully admit now, fully. Oh, you know, the sun's utterly, meant to look fuck all about we it. are relying on cat next week we're talking the 40 elephants next week oh so london, girls. london girls. there we go if we can see yeah go guys the elephants girl in gang, the room baby. elephants in the room next week so yeah 40 elephants. i mean they were criminals but i love them <laughs> so it's gonna be i love them 
I love them. Mm -hmm. So it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. But you know what? There was too much, Elizabeth. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about the brain fart. I've tied myself in you could, no, you, not no. two days. And then I was like, no, no, next week. I'm looking forward to next week because there hopefully won't be so much. My love, <laughs> you've done a wonderful job. You've done a wonderful job. Um, um, Mini Shells at Sandwich Boy, we are going alphabetically. Who do we have for W? Oh, my goodness. So let me tell you. Oh, no, hang on. Is that do spoilers? No, that's yeah, spoilers. Yeah, spoil, really. Oh, no, I will shut my hole. And, and also, I can't Which actually one? read out. Well, I probably could how we've how we've actually... Um, <laughs> Kathy, how we've actually noted these people we know. no Likewise. that will be do you know what that's going to be a little easter egg of a gift for people who buy the book when it comes out you get to know the code name yeah what what, for the people. what I actually put on when the list put the book together yes where can we find the substack one more time we have we have link okay. trees in our profiles yeah. you can find the substack there it is also at full name it again oh sorry um, uh, history after yeah. dark History after dark hub dot substack dot com. If you're on YouTube, please just put it in the comments. I just think the if I star that, I think it goes to the top. I'm not quite sure. Oh, but yes, it looks. It's gone blue, I, so I'm hoping. There you so. go. So go go and go and do that. Do that. It's got all of our shenanigans on it. It's got. Yeah. It's got you can find. You can find all of our bullshit there. <laughs> Catherine, says, how long did it take the A to Z list to put together? We had one go, didn't we? And then we sort not of not too forgot. long actually. No, it wasn't. Not long. Other I think we were we were sat around Philippa's table. One lot, just, didn't we? Just had the initial off names. Yeah, and then we kind of like put it to one side for a bit, and we went back and we went yeah. through it again. And when we got together for our AGM in November, we kind of like mm -hmm. filled Some up all the gaps. Some letters were hard. Some letters were fucking tender. Yeah, they still, <laughs> still are. Some, some of them are I mean, they were. Still are. They still are. Still are. Ge <laughs> bit generous in there in the way that we kind of categorise them. We'll, you try we'll and find you lot something. someone for X. Off you go. See how well you not get on. You'll live it. Um, right, I'm only going to put the whole the, the oh Jesus, it's getting late. I'm only going to put the pile on Substack because then I can keep it in one place. We can actually have it in one place. Easy peasy. The, and and only one poll, and thus we don't have to split the diff mm -hmm. if people poll differently. Yeah. What if our audiences are? different across and they're in different opinions it would be a catastrophe <laughs> it would blow did anyone see us try and just count the last week it's really count it was hard it's really hard <sighs> I, I had was you know, two yeses and the, some no's and uh, yeah. well, it's a difficult. This. there are lots of no's then um <clears throat> there's bound to be you'd think there's bound to be a zander they're they're hiding they are hiding. Um, the cutoff time um, to vote will be before the next yeah, episode. I can just put a, um, yeah, I can just put a Doug, one and it is one poll, one poll to rue them all. Um, <laughs> catastrophe, a catastrophe. <laughs> what, nice. what, what? Nice. Love it, love it. Yeah, um, have we done the thing? Have we said all the things? We've done another thing. Oh, where are we? Where are we? Who are we? Where else okay, are we? Did we mention uh, buy me a coffee? You know, no. Cheeky plug, cheeky plug, cheeky plug. Thank you so much because a lot of you are doing buy what me a coffee, say, thank which you. is amazing. So thank, um, you, thank you, everybody. So we're, we're on buymeacoffee.com forward slash had podcast. Um, and a few of you have even become bravely close friends of ours on Instagram. Oh, I've got something brilliant to whack on close friends that I haven't done yet. It's an ornithology <laughs> sequence. So good. Oh, so, it's filthy. Yeah. So um, you get to see our, the depraved workings of our mind that that's too filthy to go on here. We we try to yeah. We we thought what if we put our private conversation, <laughs> the, the sort of stuff we send each other in private um, on uh, on our close friends on Instagram. See if so. Anyway, so a few People. of you have braved that, People and making... and also sorry, no, no, the view of just just very generously bought us coffees yeah. which is very lovely and it is i mean it, the, the winnebago fund is growing we are going to get Catherine in a winnebago and we're going to drive while it's moving she's sleeping uh, we're going to drive while it's moving that tends to be yeah. fucking work doesn't it i mean when i wow. drive i have moving. i don't I, just if anybody has this is a newer thing to anyone i think we, we talk about this winnebago I don't it's like happening. being in things and sleeping in things that are moving. 
That's why we're going to do it. That's what but, it is. See, we I never. No, I, I had a, I had a vision. That. Now I'm really yes. worried about because it. it never. I had a vision in my <laughs> in my in my sleep of what we should do. We should <laughs> buy one of those um, upside down ankle hangers like a bat, and we should put her in that. <laughs> You know, when you say when you say bye, I bet you've got one in your sex dungeon, haven't you? Look, you've you've been to my house, you know. But I came out, but everybody. Yeah. Here I am. <laughs> I'm having a lot of therapy. She can't sit down, but she came out. <laughs> <laughs> you saw her wincing. I did that. <laughs> it's getting late, and I know you're weary. Oh dear! Um, anyway. There was lots of great jokes about polls going on here. Inappropriate <laughs> about polls in, in the Insta comments. Where Bethany says, "Where we go? Every poll is Every poll is Kick it! <laughs> Bethany says, "Where where are we going to go? Well, wherever we're invited or Disney allowed. World, Disney World." I don't think Disney needs us. They wouldn't have us, mate. No. They'd have they me. Would us They'd have property. Disney princess pets. They'd have me. I don't <laughs> Irish birdie cat has a sex dungeon. Oh, there's a surprise. Um, well, crack. Fifty Shades of Doctor Cat. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. So, is it is it time to wrap up? It, it might be. Yes. Are we go we go we go to a tour of your garden names. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring the Winnebago. How big is your we'll, garden? Because uh, Winnebago's are quite she's, large. She's got a big garden. She's got a big garden. We're, uh, she's got she's got a paddling pool. I know it. We'll oh, she, and they do excellent. great food. So we'll go there. <laughs> oh, um, and we will have a lollapalooza. <laughs> Intrepid in Friday um, cat. I can see the police live stream now chasing the Winnebago. Oh, that is my aim. <laughs> I'll be there going. I've been on TV. I've got video evidence of me saying I didn't want to do this. They've made me do it. So while you guys are inside, I'm just going to come back here. You see, um, it wouldn't have even crossed my mind to drive it whilst you were asleep. But now I can't I know, now do it. It's like it's not. But there's no point. That's kind of the point, isn't it? That you have it because you're on tour or whatever. Is that what what you do with the window? No, you, so you say you do it to save money on a, on hotel. That's well, not you really, because they're fifty I... million, billion, trillion pounds. Nah, someone, nah, someone's going to lend us a Winnebago. They're going to. Someone's going to lend us a Winnebago. Just what? like Why someone's going to yeah. lend us. Why not? Of course they yeah. fucking are. Yeah. yeah. Right know, then, everybody. Stuff like that happens all the time. Oh, hello, Julian. Um, we're we're elsewhere on social media. Um, all three okay, of us. If you, so... if, I mean, we're not like this elsewhere, no. but we're we're other places. This so, uh, can be found on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And uh, YouTube YouTube-y. as British History Tours. Cat is Katrina Dot Marchant on Instagram and reading the past on TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Obviously, YouTube. I'm on TikTok as Katrina Marchant, and I'm and also on Instagram as Katrina Marchant, and I'm on YouTube as reading the past. past. Just to add the confusion of the whole thing. Yeah, and I don't really do very much because I'm a slacker. So, but you can. Find you do me get people to stretch now twice a week. I do. So I'm the historical yes. collaborator on Facebook and Instagram. To be honest, I put much more on Facebook. 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 What the fuck is wrong with you? We should have a Facebook. I thought you heard Facebook. Oh no! <laughs> That's why I said, "What the fuck is wrong?" You can just like a lot. Of, I was like, "Oh, Cat is what I want to do that." No, Cat. Cat had something totally different. She's still on the fifty yeah. shades of Cat. Yeah. So I wouldn't bother. Fo- well, no. If you're on Facebook, <laughs> follow I put a lot more on my Insta than I do on my Facebook. So if you're following us on YouTube, thank you very much. Please go down and follow us on Instagram, History Dot After Dot Dark, where you can be the close friend, and we post a few more bits and pieces just on the Insta screen all the time. If you are following us on Instagram, please go down and find us on YouTube, History After Dark, where you can cats laughing. So I dread to think um, where obviously you get to see the comments. The thing about Insta is it doesn't save the comments, whereas YouTube does. Please like. Like, subscribe, bell button, etc. etc. We really appreciate your support on both platforms. Cat, what are you laughing at that nobody should Google? Instagram. <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> I, don't, I can't I can deal with it. I cannot do it. Oh Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we just that Mayfair Forest Witch, Fifty Shades of Fistogram, has his name on OnlyFans. <laughs> oh. 
Oh dear. Oh, I've snorted now. <laughs> That's happened. <laughs> I just slightly got that face of what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm so tired. And now, <clears throat> do you please get. Register, Maria, please register that name. Oh God. Where? Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> not the other one. No feet for free on the internet. No feet for free on the internet, ladies. Oh, do you get a uniform with a Instagram delivery boy? Oh, Arseless God. chats. <laughs> <laughs> when me and Kat were in London the other week, there was a dog wearing those. <laughs> Arseless <laughs> chats. Oh, my God. You know why that I is. think it was an outfit. It could poop out, but it looked like it was wearing a like legit gimp suit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking poon and a gimp suit. Uh, yeah, it oh, really, god. really did. <laughs> oh god. Oh. oh. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, oh now, but only fans, that would be a hoot. What a hoot. Actually, it might make us some I, money. It might make us <laughs> some money. Um, don't don't Google OnlyFans. Uh, <laughs> we're we're all accountants. Instagram. We do things that accountants, <laughs> accountants do. <laughs> Everyone's an accountant here, apparently. No feet for free on the internet. No feet for free on the right. internet. On that note. On that yeah. depravity. We are. Am I, am I counting out? As neither yeah. are you guys. Are going to end together? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Phil, ask this chat. Jesus again, I join and Phil. You love it. You love it. You all love it because you keep you know what? coming back. <coughs> we might do some live shows. Someone say, um, Candy, I, 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 Candida saying a night out with us would be a screen. Well, we'll get on a stage. We'll do it's it. It's like this, but we'll worse, do it. I would imagine. You won't get anything useful. <laughs> Yeah, you don't hold your breath. <laughs> Things will happen. I'll watch because I don't drink. I will watch and suddenly judge <laughs> and make notes <laughs> and share it Hang and on, take pictures. Time. You're going to judge us. How rude. I mean, you love it. See you all next week. Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry. Just yeah. a really, really quick one. Um, Hang on. Where is it? Too late, Dr. Cat, mad journalist. Already Googled that shit just now and it's a bloody porn site, isn't it? Yes. Only, <laughs> only fans is porn. <laughs> It is a pay-per-view porn site. Don't. I told you not to Google it. If you don't you know what it say, is, don't Google it. Don't Google it. It's okay. Do you know what's right. making me laugh is how many times people have had to say bye, so, uh, bye already. <laughs> yeah. And we're still here. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I'm counting down. Right. Okay. Sorry. 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 <laughs> you ready to switch off, Kat? Because it's you doing it. Yeah, I know. Three. <laughs> two, two. One. One. Bye. Good boot. Bye.